Hi, in this movie we're going to be looking at how we can draw um, a jacket, a blazer jacket with lapels. Um, the techniques used can be used for drawing any kind of uh, jacket at all, from single breasted like these three, or a double breasted jacket like this one here. Um, we can draw um, peak lapels like these two, or a notched lapel like this one, or a shawl collar like this. So any any kind of blazer style jacket um, can be drawn using the techniques in this workshop. Um, I'm actually using um, these images as a kind of template. Um, it's great for practice. Um, obviously, it's not how you draw a, a, a flat, um, uh, a technical flat for industry. Um, because you wouldn't have those photographs to work off um, but it's great practice because it, it demonstrates um, your ability to be able to draw something really accurately that, that looks like a finished garment um, so that's why I'm using this now these images I have screenshot from a fantastic website called outnet.com um, some great clothes but also fabulous photography as well and great for practice so whilst you're searching for something to draw you might also find something that you'd really like to wear as well so um, knock yourself out. Um, I'm going to um, uh, do this exercise using this jacket here which is a really handsome looking double breasted um, Prince of Wales check um, blazer um, so I'm just going to um, copy um, this jacket, so I've used Command C because I'm using a Mac, obviously Control C for a PC user. And I'm just going to go to my um, my female mannequin here, and I'm going to paste um, my little jacket in um, into place. Now I'm using this just purely for reference, so I've got something to refer back to. Um, that's full strength. I'm also going to make another copy of it. So I'm just going to drag this over here, holding down the Alt key um, to make um, a duplicate copy. And I'm just going to fade this down a little bit. So I'm going to reduce the transparency um, so I can position it on my mannequin with a little bit of accuracy. Now you can see here that the proportions of this jacket are perfect for my mannequin. <clears throat> and I found that everything that I found on Outnet is just shot this way. So Outnet.com, I salute you, you're fantastic. Um, so I'm just going to leave this here on this layer. Now this layer is the template layer. And if I open that up, you can see that both these new jackets are on this layer. So that's fine. Um, but I could do with this one being on its own layer. So I'm just going to uh, make a new layer and I'm going to drag... Um, this layer up and drop it on layer two and I'm just going to lock that down so it doesn't move um, and I'm going to you can see here that this is just a regular layer at the moment so I'm just going to double click on my template layer and lock it down okay so that's kind of faded out that image a little bit more I can fold that back up again um, I also need to add some more guides now I don't need this so much when I'm using this image um, to help me, but when I'm drawing um, a, a, a lapeled coat or jacket from scratch, I do need these extra guides. So I'm going to show you how to create them um, in this video. Um, and these are called our breakpoint guides. So I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to call it um, breakpoint guides like so and um, the break point is where the lapels fold back okay so where it folds back on itself so just here this is the break point on um, this particular jacket but the break points can be anywhere they can be really low or really high and it affects depending on whether it's a single breasted or double uh, breasted jacket um, where the um, the two lapels intersect on the body. So I'm going to draw out a line. Now at the moment I've got a white fill, so I'm just going to remove this white fill, um, oops, like so, and I'm going to add 
um, a nice bright color to work as my guidelines. So I'm going to use this nice bright orange here and um, I'm going to draw a line from here down to the break point and then down like so. Hit return to stop drawing. Um, it's not overly accurate there so I might just zoom in and just adjust this. So I'm using the direct selection tool to adjust that line. So there we go. So you, now you can see that follows up and that's a little bit more accurate. So I'm going to just deselect and reselect using the um, selection tool and then I'm going to reflect this using the reflect tool. Position my cursor on this center blue line. Okay. And holding down the Alt key, I click and this dialog comes up. I'm going to reflect across the vertical axis and I'm going to choose copy. So there's my guides and you'll see that where those two lines intersect is exactly where the lapels cross. Okay, so if I go back um, to my layers now, I can make this, um, this breakpoint guides into a template. There we go. So when I come to print this or do anything with it, nothing that's um, designated as a template will print. I'm now going to create another new layer. Um, this is going to be my lapel layer. I don't like this blue, so I'm just going to change the blue, only because I've got my template layer is also a blue, so I'm just going to and choose something completely different like this bright pink here and click OK and now I'm going to very quickly draw out this um, lapel so I'm going from the break point up to where the lapel meets the collar stand turns over and then down to the shoulder and then down to here and then I'm going to come in for this peaked collar. Now I could come straight back out on the same line but I've discovered a slight issue when I come to use the eraser tool in a moment. Um, so I'm just coming just below here and then I'm going to close the path down here. Now you can see it's nowhere near um, this line but this is a curve in here so the easiest way to turn this into a curve is by switching to the anchor point tool and then just grabbing hold of this line and um, curving it out there like so and then I can just adjust this handle a little bit like that and then I can add a little curve in here as well and then I'm going to just dip that in ever so slightly like so. There we go. So I'm quite happy with that, but you'll notice I've drawn it with this orange line, which isn't right, okay, because that's my guideline colour. So I'm going to change this to um, black. So I'm going to make it absolute black. So I'm going to change these all to 100% like that. And I'm just going to zoom in and show you this little issue here. This is a mitre corner and it's very sharp and it's not that useful when we're drawing clothing. So I'm going to change this using my stroke panel. Um, I'm going to change the cap of this line to a rounded cap and I'm going to change the corner to a round join and we get this which is much more appealing. Now I'm going to be using this all the time in this drawing so I'm going to make it into a graphic style. So I choose my graphic styles panel. If you can't see these panels you can find them in the Windows menu and I'm going to choose a new graphic style and I'm going to rename it um, rounded black one point stroke like so. Um, I'm, I could then add another graphic style if I wanted to I could fill this with white so you can see that CMYK are all now set to zero and I'm going to make this into a new graphic style too. So it's going to be called White Fill Black 
round stroke. So they're the two main um, styles that I'm going to be using whilst I'm um, creating my drawing. Um, it will obviously change when I come to add the Prince of Wales check. Um, there we are. So uh, what I need to do now, I'm just going to take this fill off again. So I just need to select that and pop back to this because I can add a little line in here to finish off the drawing of my lapel. I'm going to use the pencil. I just need to drop that first. So I'm going to go from here up to here, hit return to stop drawing. And then I'm going to reflect um, the lapel and this line across this central blue line using the reflect tool, holding the um, alt key again and click. And I'm going to just choose copy. So I've now got two um, lapels. All right. Now, the problem is this new one that I've just created is on top of um, the first one um, and because this is a woman's jacket the buttons are on the left so that means that this lapel should be behind this lapel. Now that's difficult to see at the moment because it's not filled so let's just re-add that white fill so I'm going to just choose that new graphic style and I'm going to um, select this lapel and if I right click I can choose arrange and bring to front and now this lapel is in the correct place and this one is now set behind. This piece down here is surplus to requirements so I'm going to select this lapel and then I'm going to use the eraser tool and I'm just going to erase that part of the jacket. Now you can see it's a slightly wobbly line um, but it doesn't matter because you won't see it when it's deselected it looks like this. So now I'm going to add the collar stand and hopefully if I select both of these pieces and right click I can choose join. Now for some reason it's not allowing me, oh no I can't join them, can I? I didn't copy them, so I beg your pardon. So I'm going to copy, okay, and I'm going to paste behind, okay, so paste in back. Keyboard shortcut for that is Command B, all right. So now I've got these two little lines, and now if I right click, I can choose join, and right click again, and join again, and this becomes my collar stand. And once again, I just need to add a little bit of shape um, to my collar stand. So I'm going to go to my anchor point tool and I'm just going to pull that up like so and this one to about there, maybe a little bit higher. There we go. If you can imagine the shoulders, the curve on those shoulders through there like that. I think this is maybe a little, a little tiny bit high so I'm just going to um, Pull that down a tiny bit. There we go. There we are. So there's um, my um, lapels collar um, finished. Okay, if I wanted to, at this stage, now I've used the eraser tool, I could make this look a little bit more peaked um, by just refining this drawing. So I'm just going to pull that down to sit there like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now the reason I didn't do this before or didn't draw it like that is because when I use the eraser um, it just there's, a, there's some kind of little awkward bug um, so that was just an, a bug avoidance really. So there we are. So there's my lapels drawn. So um, I'm just going to close my graphic styles palette and my stroke palette down and if I go back to my um, my layers panel, um, I can create a new layer and this is going to be to draw um, the, um, the front of the jacket. And I'm just going to drag this down because my lapels are going to sit on top 
of the jacket. Um, I need to zoom out a tiny bit so I can see the whole of the front of the jacket. Like so. I always like to draw as big as possible. I hate drawing or seeing people drawing, um, you know, really, really tiny. It makes life very difficult for you. So um, draw big. Um, so I'm choosing a pencil. Um, this is going to be uh, jacket front, like so. And then we're going to, um, again, I might just change my graphic style while I'm drawing this. Um, I'm going to start here, come up to the break point, and it doesn't really matter where I go across here. So I'm just going to come up to here and to meet the shoulder, and then I'm going to come down to where that seam is, and then I'm just going to click a nice straight line to under the arm and then I'm going to come out to here. Notice I'm just drawing in all straight lines because it's much easier to add shaping uh, later rather than trying to draw in shape. So I'm going to close that path there. And now I'm going to switch to my anchor point tool. And I'm just going to add some shape. So this just needs to come in ever so slightly. Sometimes I draw these sleeves so they come out, but this one, when you look at it, it, it kind of bends inwards, and I'm going to draw a nice curve here, um, and I'm going to pull this handle here to get this nice shape over the hip. There we are. So that's quite a nice shape there and then a little bit of shaping along the bottom of the, the jacket, like so. And that looks pretty much spot on. Um, so I'm now just going to fill that. And again, I'm going to reflect this over. So once again, I'm going to position my cursor on that blue line, right click, and I'm reflecting across the vertical axis, and I'm going to choose copy. Now again, the jacket is the, the wrong way round, so I'm going to click on this one, right click, and arrange and bring to front. Now it'll only bring it to the front of its own layer, so it's not going to come in front of the lapel um, layer, it's going to come to the front of the jacket layer, so um, that looks okay. All right, so now I'm going to um, put the sleeves in my jacket. And to do this, I'm going to use the direct selection tool, that's the white arrow, and I'm going to click on this line segment, the one that would run around the armhole here. So I'm just gonna click here, and I've basically selected um, this line segment from this point here to this point here. And I'm going to copy it. So. Command or Control C, and I'm going to paste behind, paste in back, okay? And you can see this little fill on this line, so that's what's giving us that funny little white line there, but I'm not worried about that because the sleeve is going to be filled with white soon anyway. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to choose Isolate Selected Path, okay? So the only path that I can pick up now is this new one on this arm, or the beginnings of my arm. And I'm going to go back to my pen tool and I'm going to continue drawing this path like so. There we go. Um, I'm just going to switch that back so I can see how accurate that is. I'm just going to pick that point up and just move it. There we are. So that's a bit more accurate to that sleeve. Um, again, I could add the smallest little curve on the bottom of that sleeve. Nothing dramatic like so. 
um, and then to take this out of isolation mode you can also see actually it needs to be a bit wider here so um, I think I'm just going to pull that sleeve that's more like it okay that's good um, whoops just wondering whether or not that would benefit no I'm just going to take that curve out and I'm going to put it in higher up because I was just looking at what happens with this sleeve here it's curving right at the top there so I'm just going to There we are, that looks better. And then to take it out of isolation mode, um, I'm just going to click above that pink line and refill that with um, white, like so. Okay, and because I um, pasted that first line behind, you can see that the sleeve is now drawn behind the jacket, which is how it's been photographed as well. So I'm going to just select that sleeve and choose the reflect tool and holding the alt key click on that center blue line you know the drill by now and reflect across the vertical axis and copy so now we have two sleeves so let's see how our jacket compares with the original drawing all right so the shape of this is looking um, pretty much spot on We've still got the um, buttons to add a breast pocket and these two flat pockets, but we are well on our way um, to getting this done. So I'm going to use this um, jacket now to get the sizing right for the buttons. So I'm going to use um, the ellipse tool and I'm going to draw from the center. So I'm holding down the Alt key and I'm just going to draw a circle, so the Alt key and the Shift key, um, to get a button the correct size. Now I don't want a one point stroke on this button because that's, that's far too weighty for such a small item. So I'm going to just take this all the way down to 0 0.25 I think. Um, and then I'm going to drag this over here and continue to draw the button. This has got four holes in it. It's a little tortoiseshell button, but I'm not going to go to that much detail. Um, I'm going to pop it here. And I'm just going to zoom in. Um, now I want um, a little indentation on my, um, my button. So I'm going to um, just um, offset the path. Now, I don't want to make it bigger, I want to make it smaller, so I'm going to do a minus number, minus 0.5, let's see what that looks like. Um, yep, I think that looks okay, so half a millimetre, that's all. Um, and then I want four little holes in the centre of this. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to um, uh, divide these up. Now I'm going to show you, so let me just fill this with a brown colour to emulate that tortoiseshell, there we are, and I'm going to make this the same. So at the moment this is just a circle on top of another circle, like so, but what I want to do is I'm going to use Pathfinder, um, which isn't open at the moment, so I'm just going to go to Pathfinder. Or was it open? Yeah, Pathfinder is open. So it's here. Um, and I'm going to use something called Divide. And by clicking Divide now, if I ungroup that, um, I can pick up this circle and move it. And you can see it's actually cut a hole through. Um, now that means that I can do the same thing with the buttonholes and it will drill holes directly through. So I need some tiny little um, circles. So I'm going to draw one here, not too big, 
and I'm just going to drag that across like so and then I'm going to drag both of these down like that and I'm just going to select those four and group them and then I'm going to position so I'm going to select this little group and then shift select that first circle and then I'm just going to click again on that circle now I wasn't holding the shift key for that second click and you can see that we get this dark line now this is going to help us align these shapes together so everything is going to align on this circle so I'm going to just choose horizontal um, align center and um, to make sure that everything is lined up exactly as I want it okay so there's my button now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this and to choose this and I'm going to choose minus front um, and now I've got little holes drilled through my button and if I wanted to I could also add um, a little bit of thread so I'm, I could do this either um, by going from here to here and then here to here or if I wanted I could do it in a cross formation I'm just going to do a cross formation like whoops like so so there's the stitching on my um, my button and now I'm going to add a button hole and I can do this there's a, a dozen different ways of doing this so I'm just going to do this using a little rectangle um, and I'm going to um, go from about here um, to about here I don't want my buttonhole to look too big I don't want this brown fill on here so I'm going to remove that and um, I'm going to add an effect now the effect that I'm going to use is found under distort and transform and it's called zigzag and I'm just going to put the preview on ignore what happens um, in the first instance because it's just too big so I'm just going to um, see what this gives me um, it's still probably a little large but I'm just going to add ridges now it's always a good idea to add an odd number so I'm going to add let's see what 39 looks like yeah I quite quite like how that's going to look I'm just going to make it a little less tall yeah okay maybe even less tall than that and maybe yeah I'm happy with that and then oops um, I'm going to um, pick up my button and paste it oops that wasn't the whole button <laughs> So I'm just going to pick that up and group that so my button is a group. So if I go to object and choose group and those stitches also need to be part of that group. And then I can paste that in front. So the buttonhole um, and the um, button itself are all together so I can select the whole thing now and group that and I can position uh, my buttons in place now a really good idea is to make this into a symbol so I'm going to open up my symbols panel and I'm going to drag my button in here like this. I'm just going to call it um, uh, new button. And you can see that my button is there. So now I, I literally just drag and drop my buttons into place. 
I'm going to use my um, jacket underneath as reference. So I'm just going to change my graphic style so I can see if I'm getting the buttons in exactly the right place. So I'm just going to move that up a tad. And I'm just going to have a look at my layers to make sure I'm putting it in the right layer. So it's on the jacket front. So um, if I were to move that up slightly, you can see it just tucks underneath um, the lapel, which is good. Uh, I'm going to move this over here and then I'm going to add new buttons. Now the thing is if I leave this um, looking exactly like um, the photograph or the buttons positioned exactly like the photograph it's going to look like a bad drawing I could really do with um, this lining up. Um, so I'm just going to line that like that and then same thing here. Um, oops. Forgot which one I used. Okay, so now my um, my buttons are lined up, and I can refill my um, uh, my drawing. So I'm going to select both those parts and choose my um, graphic style. There we are. There we go. So let's have a little look at the comparison now. All right, so this is looking um, rather nice. And I'm quite happy with how this is going. Um, the next thing I need to do is add some pockets and um, this lapel pocket and also some seams. Now the seams are here, so I need to be able to see through the jacket again. So once again, I'm just gonna pop this back the way it was. So it's nice and convenient having that graphic style uh, made up for me. So um, I'm going to uh, make sure I'm on the right layer, and I am, so I'm still on the jacket front. And this seam goes from here all the way down pretty much on top of um, the line from the jacket there. So I'm just going to deselect and draw a path from here up to here. Hit return to stop drawing and then add a little curve in there. Okay, so that's how that looks. But you'll notice that this line looks really clumsy. It doesn't look tapered. It doesn't look quite right at all. Well, we can change how that looks by going to our stroke panel and changing the profile of this line. And I'm going to use this one. This is width profile number four. Um, I just need to select it first, like so. OK, and then I'm going to select that and using that center line again, holding the Alt key, flip that over and copy for a line on the other side. And then I can just refill the jacket in a second. I just think I'm gonna do the pockets while I'm here and then we'll see how things are looking. So I'm gonna do this lapel pocket first of all. Best way to draw this is using a rectangle. So I'm using the rectangle tool and, oops, I'm just going to um, draw a rectangle from here, it's about so deep, and I'm just going to rotate 
up like so and because I'm drawing this on the jacket front layer um, it's already fitting behind um, the lapel. So now I'm going to draw the pockets and you can see they're just like little bound edges um, these pockets so nice and easy to draw these. Pen tool I'm going to start at the top and then come down to about here and then across um, to there like so and then I'm going to add a little curve so if I switch to the direct selection tool and click on this point here so add a little curve there and maybe a little curve oh no that doesn't look right I think maybe that's just a little bit high. There we are, that's more like it. So that's a better position. Um, so what I need to do now is I'm going to um, use this. Now this is um, found in Object under Path. Oops, helps if you actually have something selected. Object and Path. And then I'm going to choose... Um, outline stroke um, I think I've done that wrong so I'm going to path and uh, offset path that'll work just as well yeah that that's a better option for me so I'm using offset path I'm going to stick with this um, uh, minus five millimeters and click OK and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this center line there we are um, I think maybe my angle was a little bit too acute but I'm, I'm okay with that um, and then I'm going to just refine this here because this doesn't look quite right so I'm just going to use the direct selection tool and I can just pull that in and then take this one out a tiny bit there we go and then when I'm happy with how this looks again a little bit of refinement needed there and I'm just going to flip this over and copy that and there's my my pocket so now all I need to do is just um, select these pieces and refill them and let's see how that looks okay I'm just going to refine this edge can you see how these don't match exactly so I'm just going to um, take that point to there Oops. like that and this point to there like that and shorten that little line that I've made it's just a tiny bit too long so it's kind of sticking out the bottom a tad there we are. Um, so there we are. So there's my um, my jacket um, pretty much finished. But I've got no back to the jacket. Can you see I've got a hole in here? So I'm going to add in the back of the jacket. Now this is super simple. I'm just going to select the two front pieces and copy them. So I'm going to make a copy and I'm going to paste in back 
and um, I can then choose Pathfinder and I'm going to unite those, those pieces and if I right click I can isolate the path so you can see I'm only going to affect the back part of the, the, the jacket and I'm going to just remove this point and I'm going to do that using the delete anchor point tool like so and then let's just curve this up using the anchor point like that and that's it that's all I need to do and then if I paint this or fill this with a pale grey so it denotes the back of the jacket there's the jacket completed okay and all that remains is for us to fill this with um, our Prince of Wales check which I will do in another movie. Thanks for watching.